Welcome to the 2021 NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship Regional Final presented by Buick. From historic Freedom Hall in Louisville, history will be made. One of these two teams, number one in undefeated Louisville or Georgia Tech, will go to the semifinals for the first time in program history. The Cards at 31-0, Georgia Tech 26-5, set to go here tonight. Will it be Georgia Tech? Will it be the Cardinals? One thing we know, it is a Cardinal crowd here at Freedom Hall. The first volleyball matches to be played in this building that opened in 1956 were on Thursday. Crowd was great, but we expect it to be even more electric here tonight. Tori Dilfer with the first serve, and you know, with a spot in the national semifinal on the line, the nerves are going to be tight here at the beginning. Well, it was interesting. We saw Louisville start against Florida a little bit rocky, give them three points, and then they settle in and they find their rhythm immediately. So a little uncharacteristic from Dilfer, the senior setter, but not unexpected given the magnitude of the stage. Georgia Tech's senior setter, Maddie McKissick with the serve, then Louisville gets the point right back. Claire Chausse. This is a Louisville team. That's hitting at 304 on the season. Good for fourth in the country. Aiden Bartlett, who has played very well for the Cardinals, a sophomore out of Kansas, had seven digs in the regional semifinal win against Florida. There's Amaya Tillman with the early block. Back for Iko Jones. McKissick, quick set. Tillman got a hand on it, but the kill for Breland Morissette. And you can tell Georgia Tech making it a point. Maddie McKissick wanting to get the middles involved early and often. Michelle Collier tells us, hey, when our middles are on and they are clicking, it just takes our play to a whole different level. So look for Maddie McKissick to really get the ball moving to Breland Moore set in the middle and Aaron Moss when she checks into the game. Julia Berg made the serve. Good serve, good effort by Elena Scott the Libero to get there. McKissick, back set, Brambula off hands, and her first kill. And that's something we got used to seeing all afternoon on Thursday. Mari Brambilo putting in work on that right side pin. She's a little bit undersized, 5'11", but she plays big, and she knows how to tool the block. As Katie mentioned, 18 kills, hit 444 in the win, and it's an ace from Bergman. That's her 36th ace of the season, leading the team in that category. And this is an excellent serve. She has a nice float where she puts some pace on it, but she's 6'5", so she's contacting this ball at such a high point, it allows it to drop at a downward trajectory. Makes it really hard to serve receive against. Jones with the kill. I go Jones averaging a little bit better than two kills a set. Had six kills in the win against Florida. Louisville was down 22-20 in set two in that match. They closed with a 5-0 run, then rolled 25-12 in set three. Hit 341 for the match. Their 23rd sweep of this epic season. Great defensive play, get used to it. You better buckle up because these two backcourt defenses know a thing or two about putting their body on the line to keep plays alive. Great sequence there from both backcourts. Even though they didn't get the point, Georgia Tech had 55 digs in the sweep of Ohio State. Michelle Collier simply said, our defense was great. I mean, what, what more could you ask for this time of year than the effort they gave, especially from that back row defense? Great block touch. And a DeBeer finds the spot to tie things up at four here in set one. And this is an excellent shot by Anna DeBeer. Managing the set from her Libro, comes inside, goes thumb up, deep line shot so hard to defend in between the two defenders there. Great spot by Anna DeBeer. She's been incredibly consistent all season long and it's been summed up in this tournament. 13 kills in each of the three wins for Louisville so far in this tournament. Another point for the Cards. 
four nothing run for Louisville to go up by one. Scott, the freshman from Louisville, playing in front of a huge crowd with a spot in the field in Columbus on the line. Even tell the Libero got there, and that one's going to be on the other side of the antenna. And this run continues here for the Cardinals, and the fans love it here at Freedom Hall. Georgia Tech makes a great defensive play there. Unfortunately, Julia Bergman over there by the counter. Can't quite get it to come back into the court of play. It's all about playing sharp, clean volleyball against a team like Louisville. Dilfer, top of the tape, kill by Anna Stevenson. Starts with Elena Scott. Louisville's Libro, she sticks in on a one-on-one -on -one block, makes the dig, puts it right on top of Tori Dilfer's head. She goes with a quick three-gap to her go-to Anna Stevenson in the middle, gets it to go off the block. Stevenson, first team all ACC for the second year in a row. Good service run here by the freshman Libro for Louisville. Three ball. Kissick tried to find the opening. Bergman with the dig. Erdolino off hands and a point for Georgia Tech. It's a nice job by Georgia Tech. Handling a free ball situation from Iko Jones. Maddie McKissick goes up, holds with the middle, makes you think about it as a blocker, gets it to Bertolino on the outside. So it was a 6-0 run for Louisville to put them in front here in the first. And it's the middles for Georgia Tech trying to bring the defense. Aaron Moss. Louisville's got one of the best tandems in the country in their middle blockers. Aaron Moss, though, has Anna Stevenson's number one-on-one. -on -one. Michelle Collier, she challenged Aaron Moss and Brilliant Morissette. Have the presence and swag that the Louisville middle blockers have, and you'll be just fine. And a solo block, got some swag, and then the swag is answered. You got my number, I got yours! <laughs> Anna Stevenson with a great response on the one-on-one. -on -one. Iko Jones, Richard Jr. with the serve. The block out of play, point Georgia Tech, Brambila. Brambila's doing a nice job recognizing I got a big block in front of me, Anna DeBeer, six foot, Anna Stevenson who comes over to close, six two, that's a lot of hands in front of me. Does a nice job taking it outside the court of the play with the tool. Alexa Hendricks comes on for the cars. Dilfer. Bergman from the back, and it's blocked back by Stevenson. Great job by Stevenson recognizing, hey, Julia Bergman's the outlet here. I can't release and go block the outside pin. I got to wait. I got to be patient. She times it just right. Stevenson fourth in the ACC in blocks per set. First in hitting percentage as DeBeer goes back to serve. Sophomore, another player from Louisville. On the slide, the block by Louisville. Brambilla had to kind of spin around to try to find where it was, and she did. That one goes long. That was so effective for her in the semifinal round here on Thursday, those back row attacks. They were running her out of the back row more than they were setting her in the front row, it seemed like, because Ohio State had no answer for it. For Louisville, they're used to seeing a back row attack because they do it themselves in their own gym. So look for that to be a factor, but it'll be interesting to track how often Georgia Tech goes to it in this match. Another hitting error for Georgia Tech as Moss missed the mark, and the Yellow Jackets hitting negative so far here in the first set. Just a couple of unforced errors for Georgia Tech. They're really close. They just need to get up on it a little bit faster on top of that ball and finish their snap. Four kills, five errors now for the Yellow Jackets. By contrast, Louisville is hitting at 333. Cardinals were ready for that Brambilla back row attack. Dilfer with the bump set. Chasse, that's heading out of play. Point cards. Timeout, Georgia Tech. Great defensive play from the Louisville Cardinals. It comes over top of Tori Dilfer's head. Claire
Albatross saying, no problem, I'm taking it inside. Louisville up 12-7 in set one at a ruckus Freedom Hall. We are back in Louisville, Kentucky, and the regional final here at the Louisville Regional five-point lead in set one. Of course, you know what's happened in the news today, weather-wise, last night into today. This was the scene right before the match. They had a moment of silence here at Freedom Hall in memory of those who lost their lives in the tornadoes that hit this state. Friday night, Saturday morning, the tornado outbreak, Arkansas, Tennessee, Illinois, Missouri, and of course, Kentucky, Mayfield, Kentucky hit very hard. Our hearts are with those affected by these storms that swept through the state last night. And to all who were impacted and to the communities who begin the recovery process today, you are in our thoughts. Obviously, in the western part of Kentucky, that's where Western Kentucky University is, Bowling Green, Kentucky, that's another area that was hit very hard as well. Yeah, devastation across the western part of the state. It was awful waking up to the news this morning. Louisville, of course, was spared. Uh, but Travis Hudson, the head volleyball coach at Western Kentucky, who actually just played against Georgia Tech last weekend, going to Twitter to let everybody know he and his family and the entire team is okay. But our thoughts and prayers are certainly with everyone who is impacted today. So after the Georgia Tech timeout, trying to slow down this Louisville momentum, cards are up by five. They've done it with a couple of runs so far in this first set, Katie. The six nothing run early on in the match. Currently on a 5-0 run here. If you're Georgia Tech, you can't allow Louisville to string together points like that. You have to stop the bleeding and be able to side out at a higher clip. That helps. Aaron Moss didn't have a lot on it, but it was placed well. A little bit of a miss hit. You'll take it any way you can get it. Great slide run there behind the setter. Aaron Moss is so explosive off of one foot on that slide attack. Gets up, goes over top of the block. Nicely done there. Kayla Kaiser, senior from Louisville, comes on the serve for Georgia Tech. Dilfer for Tillman. Dug out by Georgia Tech's Brumbula. Great placement by Tillman. Rambula, another back row swing, defended well by Louisville. Georgia Tech answers with the defense. Great digs, both sides. Kind of a low set, no contact made. Point for Louisville. You're making great digs on both sides of the court if you're Greenland more set. You gotta recognize in that moment, Maddie McKissick has undersent you. It's too low for you to go up and take a big rip. Just place it and trust that your defense, which it's been doing all match, can get you another opportunity with a dig. How do you think Danny Busboom Kelly's team has handled the back row attack from Georgia Tech so far? Have you seen enough to really know what their plan is here. We've only seen it maybe twice at this point, where I mean, this stage of the game, great ace by Tony Dilfer. At this stage of the game on Thursday against Ohio State, we've maybe seen it seven or eight times. They were going to it often because it was working. Louisville's done a nice job defending it, making Georgia Tech think about it twice, but they're also not gonna send up three blockers and sacrifice a front row attacker just to try to stop a back row attack. Bergman gets the point for Georgia Tech. Much needed there by Bergman, able just to work it through, muscle it through those blocks. If you're Georgia Tech, now you have to be able to sustain and you have to score points with your serve. The kissing with the serve. Bergman again. Great save by Kabir. Quick set, but a violation is called on Georgia Tech. The point goes to Louisville. It's a good run by Georgia Tech. Maddie McKissick called for stepping over the underneath line right below the net. Your toes can pass, the whole foot cannot. Aiden Bartlett with the serve. Bergman blocked back. DeBeer teaming up with Tillman for the block. 
Amaya Tillman's one of the best blockers in the country. Anna De Beer is no slouch on that left side. She's got a lot of confidence knowing that she's got Tillman closing out, but that is a monster block and a momentum play for the Louisville Cardinals up 17-10. Big crowd, they had over 3,000 here on Thursday afternoon. Uh, I'm going to guess we might double that here in Freedom Hall, Louisville, Kentucky. Let's just take a look at the bracket. Pittsburgh and Purdue are in set number four right now with Pittsburgh up two sets to one and four points away from taking that match and earning a spot in Columbus, Nebraska, Texas later on. 10 o'clock Eastern time on ESPNU as well as Minnesota, Wisconsin, 8 Eastern time from Madison. Service error out of the timeout by Bartlett. Georgia Tech will take whatever breaks they can get right now because they're not helping themselves when it comes to their efficiency. No, they're not. Seven unforced attack errors at this point in time. Louisville is too balanced of a team, too good of a team to have that many errors. You're not doing yourself any favors. That certainly doesn't help. You got to be able to side out at a quicker rate and not allow Louisville to go on so many runs. Georgia Tech can settle in, play cleaner volleyball. You'll see that score start to get closer and closer. But right now, not doing themselves any favors. Elena Scott will serve. A big swing there. It's a great set by Maddie McKissick. It's almost a little tight, but it works out because Anna Stevenson commits with the middle. So Brombila is one-on-one -on -one against Anna DeBeer, cuts it sharp, cross-court, excellent swing. Overpass. And a violation on Louisville, so the point goes to Georgia Tech. I think Dory Dilfer expected Aaron Moss to go up and contend with her, and when she didn't, she actually took it over as a back row attacker. No can do. Big rip by Anna DeBeer. Sophomore who has just been outstanding. First team all conference for the second straight year. The freshman of the year last season in the ACC has just found another notch here her sophomore year. When Danny Busman Kelly says she might be the most mentally tough person I've ever been around, you know you got a good one on your outside pin. Unfortunately, that one, a little bit too wide of a set, can't get it to go, hits the antenna before it goes over. Here is the senior from Porto Alegre, Brazil. First team, all ACC for three consecutive years. Blocked back by Moss and Georgia Tech. Trying to build a little momentum here in set one, now down by four. It's a nice serve by Brombila. Short cross court picking on Alexa Hendricks here, who did a nice job handling it. Uh, that one floats long, so then a service error for Georgia Tech. And you just let him off the hook. Right there when you're starting to gain a little bit of momentum, a little bit of traction, you let him off the hook. But it's the risk reward of these float jump serves. You got to be so aggressive to really put it on a serve receiver. Unfortunately, sometimes you can air long. That was a little 4-1 burst by Georgia Tech, and now De Beer to serve. Dilfer took the overpass and knew what to do with it. Who says setters can't get involved in the I fun never stuff? Said, I never said such a Look thing. Look at this elevation. <laughs> Love the attack from the setter. Since I have a former all-conference setter sitting next to me. I know only to give praise, only to give love to Always. setters. And Libros when they make plays like that, how about that? Okay, I could share the wealth. Pimentel jumped in, looking for that back corner. De Beer got there for Louisville. Stevenson, good defense by Georgia Tech. And by Louisville, extended rally here. Chasse. Oh. oh, Scott stays with it. Great point. Louisville gets it. Chasse with the kill. Excellent 
for volleyball. Both sides. Great block touches to help out the backcourt. Great defensive moves. Hitters remaining patient, waiting for the next one. Jose gets it to go. 22-15 cards. Ace to beer. 29th ace of the season for De Beer. Louisville was number one in the ACC in aces per set. They were number one in the ACC in a lot of things. There's a back row swing, and that time it works for Brumby Love. Point Georgia Tech. And Brombula swings with such power, even though she's got four hands in front of her, it doesn't matter. She takes a big rip, catches a hand that's not quite pressed over, gets the kill. Back to back points for Georgia Tech. Nice shot by Bertolino, putting it on the outside hitter in Chasse. Michelle Coyier told us, hey, we're going after the outside hitters. We're going to try to wear them down, just make them think about one other thing. Dilfer. That's how efficient Louisville's offense is. Dilfer with a quick set to Stevenson, and it is set point. Excellent set by Tori Dilfer. She actually turns her whole body towards the net to get the one-on-one -on -one against Bergman. Anna Stevenson, of course, the recipient. Great slide set. Set point here at Freedom Hall. Set one between Louisville and Georgia Tech. Cardinals have been outstanding here in set one. Up 24-17, unable to put it away so far. Eric Free, Katie George, and our crew here at Freedom Hall, which is rocking here on a Saturday night. We welcome those of you who watch Pitt become the first of two ACC teams to reach the national semifinal round. The winner of this game from the ACC will join the Panthers in Columbus. Georgia Tech trying to keep things going here at set number one. Set point number two for the cards. Dilfer to Tillman. Blocked out of play, and the Cardinals take set one convincingly. Such a solid first set from the Louisville Cardinals. Georgia Tech started to kind of kick things into gear and settle in, but a lot of unforced errors early on in the set did them no favors. It'd be interesting to see how Michelle Collier regroups with her team on the sidelines. But a great first effort by Danny Busman, Kelly, and co. Pittsburgh is on to Columbus, representing the ACC. First team since Florida State to get to the national semifinal. This is an all ACC regional final here in Louisville between the Cardinals and the Yellow Jackets still to come later tonight. Minnesota and Wisconsin, Nebraska and Texas. Eric Fried and Katie George here at Freedom Hall. It has been a great atmosphere. It was good here on Thursday afternoon, the first time they ever played volleyball here for Louisville. And the fans have turned out here today to watch the number one team in the country, 31-0 Louisville. And they were rewarded with a pretty impressive first set. I actually was impressed for a one o'clock first serve on Thursday. So many people showed up at this venue, a historic venue. No volleyball has ever been played. But of course, on a Saturday night at 6 p.m., everybody has showed up and for good reason. This team is unbelievable. Of course, they've remained perfect throughout their entire season. They won the ACC. Now they're trying to do something that's never been done in program history, and they're going against a familiar foe in Georgia Tech. Pitt's got to feel so good, but I'm going to give some credit to the ACC Conference. My goodness, three teams in the final eight teams still left alive. Pitt advances one of two here, of course, will go on to Columbus. That just shows so much strength and improvement in the conference. We're used to talking about the Big Ten, but my goodness, kudos to the ACC. Well, Georgia Tech has not knocked off Louisville in the last seven meetings. In fact, the last seven meetings have all been sweeps. What needs to flip around here for Georgia Tech if they're going to change that trend and earn a spot in Columbus? Well, I think first and foremost, they're playing great defense. 
in the backcourt. They're not getting a ton of touches on blocks, but they're playing great defense. They need to take care of the ball when it comes to the front row. They have the weapons to be able to do it, but there were about seven or eight unforced errors early on in set one. Louisville is too good. They're the number one overall seed for good reason. They're too balanced of a team to give away free points. You have to play efficient, sharp, and clean when the opportunity is there. Georgia Tech did not do that early on, but it is a big stage. We'll see if they settle in, start clicking on all cylinders like we saw on Thursday because they absolutely rolled Ohio State and looked like a very good team. Louisville's got so many weapons offensively. They're an outstanding defensive team. I right at the top of the telecast, you put the spotlight on the straw that stirs the drink for the Louisville Cardinals, and that's their center, Tori Dilfer. Tori Dilfer is an elite setter. You talk to this coaching staff at Louisville, and they fully believe she has a shot to be in the national gym here soon. She could walk into Anaheim, not just because of the talent that she has and the skill level. She sets a beautiful ball, great location, great accuracy. But my goodness, what a competitor she is. She has this ability to win and makes everybody around her better. It's a reason why you got to have a great setter to dish it out to facilitate Eric if you're going to be a great team. And they've got a great setter in Tori Dilfer. I'm sitting next to a great setter here for Louisville. Won three conference championships with the Cardinals, but they never made it to the national semifinal round. They've reached this round here before the regional final round. They did it back when they knocked off Texas in 2019, but they couldn't get past this step. They are two sets away from going further than any Louisville program has ever gone before. Let's see how Georgia Tech responds. They'll have the serve to start set number two. Mariana Brumbula puts it into play. Good start for the cards. Claire Chausse had four kills on 11 swings in the first set. Stevenson and Beer each with three kills in set one. You talk to Dory Dilfer and she'll say, it's a luxury. It's a luxury having the arms that I have in the front row. It's a luxury having the defenders that I have in the back court. She says it makes my job easy, but if she isn't able to put the ball exactly where you need it, you don't have this kind of success. This is a well-oiled machine. Ooh. I don't know if Dilfer took that off the cheek. I think she took it off the ear or the cheek. That was pretty hard contact, but pretty tough player. I mean, she's the daughter of a football player. I know he's a quarterback, but Trent Dilfer's a football player, so I'm sure Tori's got a little she toughness. She grew up in a really competitive household. She actually got her hands up on that one right, to right. block her face. So good reaction time there. Bertolino had the line, saw it, and took it. Yeah, I don't think anything's wrong with Tori Dilfer after taking that contact because she went right to doing what Tori Dilfer does, and that's getting an assist. It was interesting because Iko Jones was actually the one who left the line open that resulted in the hit to the face, and then she set Iko Jones. I might have actually froze her for a little bit and said, uh-uh, <laughs> you're letting them take out aim at my face. I don't know if I'm going to set you. Only joke. I know, I know. You've got jokes. Bergman. Off the block, off the Georgia Tech hands. You know, Louisville, you talk about Dilfer setting this team and all the choices she has, but really the Cardinals are an elite defensive team. They are, and it starts at the net. You think defense, you think it digs, but really the block is the first and foremost line of defense, and Anna Stevenson and Amaya Tillman, the two middle blockers for this team, are phenomenal and so physical. As you can see, Anna Stevenson recognizing passes tight, I'm going to have my way with it. She did a nice job on the previous play, closing out to Dilford to get that block. But defensively, Louisville is elite. You talked earlier about runs for Georgia Tech. They went on runs of 6-0, 4-0, and 4-0 in that first set. And it feels like Louisville's trying to build another run right now, but Georgia Tech comes up with a key point to pull within two here in set two. Now it's Maddie McKissick, 5'9 setter. Senior, so much experience with this Georgia Tech team running the show, actually going head-to-head -head against Anna Stevenson. She got the better over there. Crucial point, now if you're Georgia Tech, you need to start scoring with the serve, stringing together a run of points here. Kayla Kaiser back on the serve. Kaiser with the dig. Another block, Stevenson. 
It's a great setup by Tori Dilfer on the right side. Anna Stevenson going straight with her. They know Bergman is a key to this offense at 6-5. Stevenson had her number there. Blocks are 5-2 in favor of the cards. Brombula with a back row attack. This is successful. Point Georgia Tech. And Alexa Hendricks made a great read on it, was right there, just couldn't quite body it back into the court. Brombula, nice job going one on one out of the back court. Look for them to run that a couple more times here while she's back there in these rotations. Maddie McKissick. Dilfer looks for Chausse. It's a great set by Tori Dilfer. She's pushed back a few feet, which makes you think, oh, she's going to set the slide. But then she jacks it out to the outside, which allows that seam in between the block. Claire Chausse recognize it, executes. Anna Stevenson. Well, we showed you the numbers before that Mariana struggled hitting against Louisville in two matches this season, but she's been very good here tonight so far. Six kills, just one error at 417 hitting percentage. She's off to a great start. She needs her counterpart, Julia Bergman, to step it up just a tad more because when those two are clicking, this Georgia Tech offense is extremely dangerous. <laughs> she found the perfect spot, though, rolled it up the tape. It dropped in, and Georgia Tech gets another kill from Brumbula. You got to love it. You go power, power, power. Oh, just going to drop in a finesse shot, keep the defense honest. She goes sharp cross court, gets a little help from the net there, dribbles over. Great heads up play. Dilfer for Chausse again. Georgia Tech's ready for it. Another battle right at the net. Out of the scramble, Chausse again. Pimentel, tough set, and it results in a point for Louisville. The stay made by Georgia Tech. And so those are the type of points we're talking about when we have our conversations with Michelle Coyier. What went wrong in the first two meetings in the regular season? You get a free ball situation there if you're Georgia Tech. Pimentel doesn't handle it. It goes too tight. Brombila cannot get her hand on it, and it results in a Louisville point. You have to be a little bit cleaner, a little bit sharper. The block. Tillman and Chasse teaming up for another Cardinal block. Another good setup here by Chasse. Tillman working hard, working hard to get there. All Chasse blocking line there to get another point for the cards. 6 2 edge and blocks. Each team with 20 digs so far here in this match. Set two of the best of five. Excellent set and swing to be able to keep it alive. Brambila missed the mark. And a point for the Cardinals. Michelle Collier just came out to talk to her senior outside. Maybe trying to go with too much finesse and go with what got you there. That power that we saw in the victory in the sweep of Ohio State. That one drops in and a point for the Yellow Jackets. Well, we've got Bergman and Brambila as our killer bees for the Yellow Jackets. Should add Bertolino. Should we add Bianca Bertolino? How I can we leave so. her the out? The double B. Eight kills, 11 digs against Ohio State. Yeah, let's let add a third B to the killer bees for the Yellow Jackets. Moss, Brambila. Are you in charge of Georgia Tech's marketing? <laughs> well, I, call me. I'm available. That one's deflected off of Louisville. So give the point to Georgia Tech now within two here in set two. We showed you earlier the season series between these two teams, two sweeps for Louisville, but there were two memorable sets in the middle of things. 
A 36-34 win for Louisville and a 27-25 win for the Cards as a point for Louisville Stillman. Chausse will check out as Bartlett will come on. Louisville with a sweep over Florida. They were down 22-20 at set two, but they closed with a 5-0 run. Ended up getting the victory. And Georgia Tech with a sweep of Ohio State. Fought off a set point in the second set. Went on a run. That one's going to drop in. I think Moss just pulled the hands back. She knew she had the point for Georgia Tech. Delfer back to Jones, right at Bergman. Delfer tries to get with Jones, but missed the mark, and Georgia Tech is within one. I love the repeat set from Dilfer. She goes to Iko Jones, she almost gets the kill, but Bergman sticks that dig, goes back to Iko. She has a one-on-one, -on -one. unfortunately just can't get on top of it. I like the repeat decision. Tillman with the rip. Great job by Amaya Tillman here. Recognizing I got one on one. I got to work hard. Get in there to Dilfer. Get up fast. She does. Cuts this crossbody. Back to zone one. So hard to defend. Tillman with three kills on five swings. No errors. McKissick, Brambilla, back row attack and a point for Georgia Tech. That was the play that worked time and again against Ohio State here on Thursday in the regional semifinal round. And Anna Stevenson's one of the best blockers in the country, and she's got a good setup, and she stretched over. Brambilla just hits the ball so dang hard, it doesn't matter, and she's still able to tool the ball. Service error for Georgia Tech. So it's a 4-1 run for Georgia Tech, and just when they're building some momentum, they get a service error. But it's progress. Getting a 4-1 run is better than what we saw in that first set. So it's progress. Yes, you would like to see Bertolino put that in play. But a good run by Georgia Tech nonetheless. They try it again with the back row attack. That's off the hands of the kill. For Anna Kabir. And that's what makes this global team so dangerous. They're out of system. Elena Scott, the freshman Libro, is a former setter. This is her first time playing Libro. So she's got great hands. So even when Louisville's out of system, you've got a setter putting her hands on it, putting your hitters in great situations, winnable situations like the one you just saw. Babila attacks the freshman Scott that time and gets the point. So, you know, we saw Michelle Collier talk to Babila a little bit. Put away the soft stuff. Let's get that arm cocked and ready to go. And she delivered again. Nine kills already to lead all players. But she does have errors in the set. Remember, we talked about her errors being minimized. She does have three errors this set. Still hitting 227, which is a great clip for as many swings as she has in this match. Against a good defensive team like Louisville as well. Cards come right back with the swing and the point. And they're up by three. Anna DeBeer recognizing I got a lot of real estate between that block, registers her fifth kill of the match. called on Georgia Tech, and that gives Louisville a point, putting them on top 15-11 here in set number two. They took set one in control in set two. We welcome you to the 2021 NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship Regional Final presented by Buick Freedom Hall, Louisville, Kentucky. Cards took set one, they're on top by four here in set number two. Busy weekend here in Louisville. Women's basketball coming up on Sunday, the 20th annual Women's Jimmy V Classic. Tomorrow here in Louisville, rivals will be squaring off 
Number 14, Kentucky taking on number seven, Louisville at one Eastern Noon Central. Then the number one team in the country, South Carolina takes on eighth ranked Maryland. Both games on ESPN and the app, of course. And to donate to the V Foundation for Cancer Research, go to V.org. Now, I have just found out that Beth Mowens and Debbie Antonelli, who are in town to call that game tomorrow, are at this match here tonight. As Louisville has a service error out of the timeout. I'm guessing, and I haven't seen him, Jeff Walls, the Louisville head coach, he said he was looking forward to rooting on the volleyball team. So they've got big fans around here. So I'm on the lookout for all of them. But it's good to know that Debbie and Beth know where it's at on a Saturday night in Louisville. They just want to watch some great volleyball, right. high-level volleyball, and they're getting it right now. Dilfer to Stevenson. Fifth kill for Anna Stevenson. 19 assists for Dilfer. Great jack set by Dilfer. Allows Stevenson to turn it line if she wants. Cut back cross court between the seam. Anna Stevenson having a really good showing through the first set and a half. CC Rush came on to set at the end of to serve at the end of set one. And at Chasse and Brambila has her 10th kill of the match. Her sixth of this set. Shelly Collier says, Brambila is the heart of our team. She's an energizer bunny. Sometimes we have to tell her, okay, it's, it's too much. Come down, come down. You don't want to calm her down tonight, though. She's doing it all for her team. Well, service error number four for Georgia Tech. It goes without saying, when you're taking on the overall number one seed in this tournament, 31-0 on the season, winners of 42 of their last 43, you cannot beat yourself. You cannot have hitting errors and service errors if you expect to upset Louisville. No, and it's one thing to have unforced hitting errors in the front row because you're going against such a big block. Sometimes opponents run from the block. From the service line, you got to keep it into play. Another block for Louisville. That's their seventh of the match. Iko Jones at the net, leading the way defensively for the Cards. Iko Jones, 6-2. Amaya Tillman, 6-3. That is a wall I do not want to face. Amaya Tillman is an unbelievable blocker. Her counterpart is two. Louisville plays with a swag at the net. They expect to touch and block every single ball that crosses the plane of the net. Service here for Louisville. That's their fourth. So they haven't been perfect from the service line. Here's Pimentel back to serve for Georgia Tech. 26 wins on the season. They've won five in a row. All five wins. Sweeps. Kill for Jones. And this is just a great job by Louisville remaining patient. Tori Dilfer is on the run. Moving forward, moving forward. Has to crouch down a little bit to just put this ball up into play. Iko Jones is so fast, she's able to get in there and go wrist away and find the court. Good serve from Bartlett, McKissick, quick set, and Moss with the kill. And you need to see more of that if you're Georgia Tech. Great pass out of service right on top of McKissick's head here. She's got all three options if she wants it. She goes to Moss for the one-on-one. -on -one. Moss stays in line with her body. Really nice swing. Isabella D'Amico will come into the match now for Georgia Tech. This is by design for the Yellow Jackets defensively, right? It is. D'Amico will check in in that front row, go straight in for Maddie McKissick, just to give him a little bit more size on that right side for a blocking purpose. Boss and D'Amico got the hands there, but they couldn't complete the block. D'Amico will check out. McKissick will rotate back in. Cards first to 20 here in the second set. They took set one, 25-18. They hit 281 in set one, while Georgia Tech hit 116. In this set, Louisville's hitting 455. Oh, and that number's going to go up. Correction, they're going to say a net infraction on Louisville. So it's Georgia Tech points. You see Anna Stevenson out there. She said, it was my pinky finger. Was she looking at you saying, did, did the cameras catch that? Did everybody see that I, that I hit the net? Fans hate it. 
Anna Stevenson owning it. Back to back points for Georgia Tech. Tori Dilfer, good effort there, trying to bring the ball back on her side. Unfortunately, just tips it, can't quite keep her hand on it. It goes over, back row attack. There is <laughs> someone who is rooting for Georgia Tech. That one goes long at Georgia Tech. That was Ellie McKissick, Maddie McKissick's sister. Ellie, a sophomore, libero for Florida. I'm sure her Gator teammates will forgive her for rooting so loudly for another team, but Ellie stuck around after Florida got knocked out of the tournament to root on her big sister. I thought it was awesome. The McKissicks obviously have a big contingency here at Freedom Hall coming up from Orlando to see both daughters play. McKissick, Ellie McKissick being, makes an early exit after losing on Thursday. Mary Wise was the one said, you better stay. You better stay and support your older sister, the senior setter for Georgia Tech. Well, yes, because when we take you through the years with the McKissick sisters, and you can see, like, little sister Look looks up cuteness. to big sisters. Yeah, so cute. So, of course she was going to be here flashing that McKissick smile. Congratulations to Ellie. Florida had a fantastic season. They just ran into a buzzsaw here against Louisville on Thursday. Maddie told me yesterday at practice, she said, I had a knock on my door last night, and I opened it up thinking, who could this be? And there is Ellie. I'm, <laughs> saying, I'm here. I'm going to stay. I'm going to get to support you. Mary approved it, which is pretty really awesome of Coach Wise to say, hang back. Team's going to leave, but stay with your family. If I can carry through the metaphor here, this is the Georgia Tech team right now in this match knocking on the door a little bit, saying, we're still here. Louisville just took a timeout. Georgia Tech's brought it within two. So the door's open here a little bit for Georgia Tech as they try to build a little momentum, and their crowd makes some noise. Absolutely. And if you're Georgia Tech, can you keep this momentum going? Can you win set two to even this thing up at one apiece? Because I can tell you, going down two sets to none is so mentally challenging. It's a mental hurdle you have to get over because you know you have to win the next three if you want to advance. So this is a crucial set for Georgia Tech here. Here got over and a double called, so a point for Georgia Tech. Louisville called underneath the net underneath there. The net. Thank you. Trying to make the dig there on Brombila's tip. And just like that, Georgia Tech, one point down. A 4 nothing run here for the Yellow Jackets. Bernalino, good serve. Dilfer to Jones. And that missed the mark, and Georgia Tech has come back to tie it at 20. It's an excellent run by Louisville. Great pass by Elena Scott. Even better set by Dilfer. Iko just pushes it just a tad too far, and now it's a game to five. Listen to the crowd now. Louisville fans up on their feet. Great effort by Bergman. Oh. A chip shot from Brombila. Doesn't miss the second attempt, though. She's pumped up. The Yellow Jackets are pumped, and they have the lead here in set two. I love the repeat from McKissick. She goes to Brombila. She goes with a chip shot. Next opportunity sets her again. She's got one-on-one -on -one against Stevenson. She finds the backcourt so hard to defend. Excellent run by Georgia Tech to take the lead for the first time in what feels like this entire match. So a timeout called by Louisville. They have used their two timeouts here in this second set as Georgia Tech is up by one. Men's basketball coming up tomorrow. It's a top 10 showdown. Colin Gillespie and sixth ranked Villanova will be in Waco to take on undefeated, second ranked defending national champion Baylor at three Eastern, two Central on ABC. And the ESPN app, number one, Purdue lost at Rutgers in a thriller on Thursday, so the door is open for that number one spot in the country. Baylor would take it with the win, so you see that coming up tomorrow. What have you seen differently from Georgia Tech here in these last few minutes that's put them on this 6-0 run and put them in front, Katie George? Well, they've started taking care of the ball a little bit better from the service line as well as from the attacking line. Great defensive play, and they've started touching more balls. When you start slowing down these attackers on Louisville, it makes it so much easier for your backcourt 
to not only get in position to read, but then to go make volleyball plays. And Georgia Tech's been able to do that. And also, they show no quit. They're so much like their head coach, Michelle Collier. She fights for every single point over on that sideline. Her team fights for every single point. The contingency of Yellow Jacket fans here at Freedom Hall are absolutely loving what they've seen in the last five to 10 minutes on the court. Can they keep it moving to tie this thing up at one apiece? It would be massive. You saw Michelle Collier talking with assistant Claudia Pinheiro, former Olympic coach for Brazil, won two gold medals. Bergman kept it alive. Free ball for Louisville. And the cards end the run, tying it at 21. And it's points like that with your Georgia Tech. You can't allow a free ball to get sent over to Louisville because they're going to make you pay. And just like that, Anna Stevenson gets a quick kill. Michael Jones serves for the cards. Throw swing and another kill for Brumbilla. Louisville assistant coach Dan Meski said the first two meetings, we did not see a whole lot of back row attack. Well, you're seeing a ton of it today because Brumbilla is finding a lot of success. There just catches Elena Scott, watching a little bit high into her shoulder there. That's her ninth kill, not on the match, ninth kill this set. 13 for the match, Kaiser to serve. Dilfer sets it to DeBeer, who missed the mark. That's why, and the point goes to Georgia Tech. Remember, earlier I said Louisville was hitting over 450 in this set. Well, now they're piling up the errors. They have seven in this set, and they're hitting 194 in this second set now. They're getting pushed here. They're facing a little bit of adversity. It hasn't happened so much of this season because they've been so dominant. How does Louisville respond right now with their backs against the wall in this set? Brambula with the dig, Brambula is set, Brambula with the kill. Unbelievable, she's 5'11", jumps out of the gym, and I mean just goes for it. Look where she ends up, at the net, her chest is in the net when she takes that swing. She is willing her team to win this set here. Kaiser serving for set two. Also, difficult serve to make in a high-pressure situation. Bergman comes all the way over. Give me the replay, production crew. She comes all the way over from left front to help out Maddie McKissick, who is 5'9". And you are met with a three-person wall here. Anna DePierre tries to cut it inside, instead is met by a 6'5 wall. Georgia Tech, great resiliency there to be able to tie this thing up at one apiece. Great celebrations all over the court. I'm voting for Kayla Kaisers as the best for Georgia Tech because they've got something to celebrate here. They have handed a set loss to mighty Louisville. Georgia Tech takes set two. Brief intermission here at Freedom Hall. We'll check in with the studio after this timeout. We welcome you back to the 2021 NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship Regional Final presented by Buick, Louisville, Kentucky, the site of this regional final. A second ACC team will take part in the regional semifinal round in Columbus. Pittsburgh with a victory over Purdue earlier today. This all ACC showdown in Louisville between Georgia Tech and Louisville feels a whole lot different right now. Louisville took set 125-18, a 10-1 run to close out set two gave Georgia Tech the 25-21 win. Only the 12th set that the Cardinals have lost all season, and this is match number 32. It doesn't happen often because these Cardinals have been so dominant. They have a great defense, a great block, obviously a great setter and great attackers. Georgia Tech had their number in set two, a couple of uncharacteristic errors from the cards late. It'll be interesting to see how they come out quickly here in set three after a conversation with head coach Jenny Busboom Kelly. You see the overall hitting numbers, but if you break it down, Georgia Tech hit 281 in that second set. Louisville hit 152. 
Those attack errors during that 10-1 run really costing the Cardinals. Ariana Brambilla had 10 kills in set two. Set three is underway, best of five here with a spot in Columbus on the line. Scott with a diving attempt, but the point goes to Georgia Tech. 15 kills now for the senior from Brazil. Georgia Tech one set two, and they're even in this match with Bergman being quiet so far, Katie. Two kills, six errors, hitting at 267. Minus 267, I should say. And do you need anybody else? I was going to say, do you, do you need I don't know if it else? matters, because <laughs> Brambilla is doing it all right now. Front row, back row from the service line. Great job there going one on one against Chasse cross court. But we know how good this Louisville team is. If Georgia Tech's going to continue on this great pace and upset the cards on a home court, you got to have more pieces show up. So look for Bergman to start clicking. Look for others, the middles, Aaron Moss, Breely Morissette. They're going to need more production from those people if they're going to pull this off. Right now, looking really good, and that's thanks to Brombila. Another attack error for Louisville, this time for Tillman. <laughs> And that ends the 3 0 run to start set three on the service air. So often in volleyball, kills can be contagious. Once somebody gets rolling, everybody wants in on the action. Unforced errors can also become contagious. Aiden Bartlett. Setting the middle for Freeland Morris set to get a kill. Maya Tillman kind of just throws it over on that tight play at the net. It allows for a free ball. Pimentel puts it right on top of McKissick's head. She goes one-handed with it, gets it to Morissette. Beautiful play by the setter middle duo. Dilbert toward the beer. Pimentel got there. McKissick gets it over. Diving play by Bertolino. Awkward swing by Brambilla. We play on. Great defense from both teams. In the end, it's a point for the cards. And that's what Louisville's got to get back to. Blocking balls at the net, making it easy on their defense. Amaya Tillman closes to Iko Jones. You can feel the urgency from these players on both sides of the net. Atmosphere in here is electric. Nothing like it. A block from Anna Stevenson to wake the crowd back up, give another point to Louisville. And it's not just a block for Louisville, it's who they blocked. They blocked Mariana Brambilla, who's been having her way ever since set two. That's a massive momentum play for the cards. Ross missed the mark. That ties things up at four. Scott will go back to serve. Louisville native, the freshman who played Mercy Academy, as Katie mentioned before, she was a setter in high school. Cardinals needed a libero. Lexi Hamilton, a two-year starter, graduated. Scott has stepped into the role, and she's played great. That's off the head of Moss, I think. Another block, another point. They can outmuscle you at the net because of their size, their discipline, and the execution sealing the net. Scott back to serve with Louisville in front. Another block 
for Stevenson. Seven blocks for Anna Stevenson. She's just being a bully right now at the net. She's getting a hand on everything. And if you're Georgia Tech, you know that you've got the resiliency to be able to take a set from this team. You just did it. You just proved it. Can you settle in and start trying to mix up your shots because the block's got your number right now? That's out and a miss hit by Bergman, who is off her game right now for Georgia Tech. Bergman, the ACC Player of the Year, first in the conference in kills percent at 4.5, but an attack error for Georgia Tech. They're sixth already this set. It's much like we saw at the start of set one right. for Georgia Tech, where they were giving away three points. It's one thing to try to mix things up. Well, Stevenson with a mistake there on the swing and a point for Georgia Tech. You see it immediately from her face. She wants that one back. She hit that on her forearm almost. Didn't make great contact with her hand. That's why you see it awkwardly go long. Dofer for Jones. That one misses. So a couple of swinging errors here for... Yeah, I go Jones right now in a bit of a funk. For somebody who can be so good, she's having a trouble with his last few swings and just pushing him a little bit too long. Tori Dilfer, of course, trying to help her out of the slump, much like Maddie McKissick's trying to help Julia Bergman out of her slump. Great serve, but a great answer by Louisville to get the point. It's a nice job by Tori Dilfer going back to her middle and Anna Stevenson. The two have played so much volleyball together. After last season, exiting too soon by their accord against Washington, where they were up in the fifth set of the regional semifinal, losing that game. They said, we had a bad taste in our mouth. We knew we could do something special. Dilfer and Anna Stevenson immediately said, we're coming back for more because we know we can do something great. Did they know that they'd remain perfect all this time? I don't think so, but they're having a whole lot of fun doing it, playing side by side. Point for Georgia Tech, a little delay here to mop up the floor. I thought it was funny, Tori Dilfer said before this regional started that, quote, I still think about that Washington game and I get, and I'm gonna paraphrase here, ticked. But she had the passion about it. She was upset and still using that as a bit of motivation to try to get past this round and get on to the final four. Well, the best competitors, you often ask them, what was your greatest win? They can't even tell you. It's always the loss that they come back to. It's the loss that they remember most, that they can vividly tell you point after point what happened on a given play. And Tori Dilfer is a true competitor, and that Washington loss has stuck with her. Back-to-back -back points now for Georgia Tech as the Yellow Jackets push back. There is Dilfer to Stevenson. Good job by Moss just to flick it over. Georgia Tech tried to keep it alive, but there's really no stopping in the beer when she gets flying downhill like that. It's a heads-up play by Tori Dilfer, recognizing, hey, we got bodies on the ground over on Georgia Tech. They're scrambling. I'm going to set up the outside pin because Maddie McKissick's not set quite yet. Anna DeBeer able to go over top of the block there. DeBeer back to serve. McKissick for Bergman, trying to get her going, but the defense there for Louisville. And Chasse turns it into offense with the kill. Seven kills for Chasse, no attack errors for her. Senior out of Wisconsin, second team all-conference selection. 21 kills in three tournament matches heading into tonight's regional final. Joust at the net. And Bergman will get a kill this time. That's her third. It's a great job by Maddie McKissick recognizing, hey, I have an opportunity to go up and swing or take this over. Nope, I'm going to be patient and be disciplined. I'm going to set up Julia Bergman, my 6'5 counterpart, on that first contact who can go up and actually take a nice swing at it. Smart volleyball. Kaiser on the serve. 
Good job by Scott to receive the serve. That gave Dilfer a chance to set Chausse for the kill. Excellent swing by Claire Chausse, and you brought it up. Eight kills, zero errors. Chausse is one of the most patient human beings I have ever watched play the game. She usually is so clean. Zero errors tonight, hitting 400. She recognizes if the set isn't to my liking, I'm gonna put it in play and trust that my defense can give me another opportunity. Back row swing, and Frambilla drops it in. She now has 18 of the 33 kills for Georgia Tech. She's an absolute force. There recognizes, hey, got one block up against me. I'm going to take this deep line, drops it right into the court of play. Excellent position. She had 18 kills in the last match. She's got 18 kills here in set three. And a block, solo block by Amaya Tillman. And I love it from Amaya Tillman. Bertolino wasn't in a good position to take a rip, so she kind of just rolls this. She's just trying to control it. Well, you got to account for Amaya Tillman, who's going to stay at the net and give you her best shot. Good job just sticking in there to get the block. Jones was ready with the block at the net. Point Louisville. Iko Jones has struggled from an attacking standpoint. This is might be exactly what she needs to get going. It doesn't, she doesn't need Amaya Tillman to close to her. That's a one-on-one -on -one solo block, turning it back into the court of play. Excellent block by Jones. Kissick, they'll try again. Jones is there with Tillman. Chausse takes the Dilfer set and puts it away again. Claire Chausse is leaving Louisville with nine kills here in this regional final. It's a great play, and the fans are loving it. Iko Jones with a touch block comes down, puts Tori Dilfer in a position to run tempo to Chausse. Beautiful volleyball, and the fans appreciate it. Chausse had five kills in the sweep against Florida. Georgia Tech with the violation. Point for Louisville. That will get us to a media timeout as Louisville's got 15 on the board. It's interesting. They're calling her underneath the net. Maddie McKissick didn't even look that close to the net. She, of course, is having a conversation with the down ref. Now, Wade Dubois is listening but saying we're at a timeout have a seat on the bench and we'll be back in a moment 15 to 10 cards on top of the yellow jackets set three. sets are even one apiece louisville has the edge here in set three best of five with a spot in columbus on the line it has been a historic season for the cardinals their highest ranking in program history their previous high was sixth in the country they did that twice the first acc team to be ranked number one in the country. They have played great teams all season long. Purdue, Nebraska, Pitt twice, Georgia Tech twice. All those teams still in the tournament after Thursday's regional semifinal round, by the way. They beat Kentucky in five sets, which was really kind of a watershed moment, it felt like, for this program. That was a game we were able to call. It's just been a tremendous run for the Cardinals all season long, continuing right here into the tournament. did not drop a set until Georgia Tech took set two here. Louisville with the serve. Brambilla got there. Bergman got it over. And Bergman tried the pancake save. Couldn't get there. Even though Louisville's had a dominant season, they'll take support and help wherever they can get it. This is the home of Bellarmine basketball, this building, historic Freedom Hall. So this is what they left on the whiteboard in their locker room, which is Louisville's locker room after they had a game here last night. The men played here at Freedom Hall on their court, wrote a little sign to the women's volleyball team who checked in earlier today for serve and pass. All the men's basketball players signed it. Just a credit to the Louisville community helping out a situation where there's a lot of events, a lot of games going on, and Louisville, of course, wanted to be able to host and utilize their number one overall seed, Scotty Davenport of the men's 
Bellarmine basketball team said, these student athletes deserve it. We're happy to arrange schedules, flip courts back and forth, back and forth each and every day so that they can get this done. Ellen and Arena, where Louisville was 15-0 this season, it's just too small to host an NCAA tournament event. KFC Yum Center was booked for a concert. So they needed a big arena. And they said, well, we have this place called Freedom Hall <laughs> that you may have heard of once or twice. And that's where we're playing volleyball for the first time. Yeah, unfortunately, they couldn't uh, get Pentatonic's Christmas show at Freedom Hall to reschedule. At so the I, Yum Center, I'm right sorry now. that you had to forego your tickets there. Yeah, well, I was looking forward to it. What are they? Are they? Is that the a cappella group? Is that who that is? Yeah, they would be uh, clapping for the global volleyball team at this point in time. <laughs> That's what, is that you're what you're not going to join me? Am I supposed to harmonize or I, what? I, I, have, I have no idea what's supposed to happen, quite honestly, with that. So. <laughs> well, that makes two of us. And you were the one doing the whatever that thing was, the pentatonic. I've seen Pitch Perfect. OK. We got a challenge here from Michelle Collier. So we'll have a delay. You can sing more if that was singing, whatever that was. <laughs> right now, it's Louisville on top by six, but Georgia Tech challenging here, and we're going to be looking to see if there was a net violation. Wade Dubois will go to the monitor and scan through. Michelle Collier did not have luck with the challenges. She used two on Thursday in the first set, then one in the second set. Remember, we are not using the experimental rule anymore, so each team with three challenges. And if that violation is what they're looking at here, I don't see anything. Oh, it, Tori Dilfer, did she get out of the way? You said the foot has to go all the way over, right, Katie? Yeah, you, not see on the her hair, seat. you see her hair go in the net. Hair is fair game. You don't get called for that. I don't see her foot completely cross the plane. <laughs> Neither do the officials. Or Georgia Tech could have seen the net move, and like you said, hair is okay. Rest of the body, no. And sometimes you see the net bounce, and you may have thought, well, somebody was in the net. Tori Dilfer, obviously the closest player in proximity for that given play. Also, sometimes just challenging gives your team a little bit of a reset, just a pause. Hey, let's regroup. Let's talk about it for a second. Let's get back after it. So Georgia Tech with two challenges remaining. If we go to a fifth set, they'll have an additional challenge. Bartlett with a defensive play to keep the point alive. Rambula finds the spot again. I think they were calling a net violation on Louisville before the swing by Brambula. Is that swing enough to kickstart here? Another run for Georgia Tech. It's exactly the same scenario we saw in set two. Louisville was up, felt like they were in control. Georgia Tech chipped away at that deficit was able to pull out a win. Brambula with the kill off the hands of Dilfer. That's number 20 for the senior. 20 kills. And she's done it in so many different ways with power. But there she takes a little bit off and just goes thumb up to cut it cross court to take Tori Dilfer out of the play. Unfortunately, just can't keep her platform on. And then an ace from Georgia Tech. Very similar to what happened in set two. Louisville was in control and leading. Danny Busboom Kelly wants to talk about it here, and rightfully so, because Georgia Tech stole all the momentum in set two to get that win. Can they do it again when we return? Louisville up 17-14 in set three. Big weekend here in the Derby City. Women's basketball on Sunday, the 20th annual Women's Jimmy B Classic. Great showdown, Ryan Howard, the All-American for Kentucky, will be here in Louisville to take on the Cardinals, who are ranked seventh in the country. That's at 1 Eastern, noon Central. Then it's number one, South Carolina, hosting number eight, Maryland. Both games are on ESPN. And the women who will be calling that Louisville-Kentucky showdown are in the building here today, taking in a little volleyball. There is Beth Mowens on the left. Debbie Antonelli is over on the aisle. Debbie's screened right there in the gray sweater, but they are doing some basketball prep by taking in some NCAA I love that. volleyball. Good to have them here. A oh, big swing from DeBeer. Didn't look like her body was in the right position to get a lot on that, but she's stronger than your average hitter, so she found a way to get a lot on it. 
Now you can see him turn around. Keep it up. Keep it up. They want a little tempo here. A little urgency. You got control in this set. Close the door. Can't close the door if Aaron Moss is there kicking it in. Point, Georgia Tech. Aaron Moss is so physically gifted. She's fast. She's got great jumping ability, a quick arm swing. If Maddie McKissick is in system, she needs to continue to utilize those middles. It's the hardest shot to defend. Keep it tell with the dig. Off the hands that will drop in and another point for Georgia Tech. Here come the Yellow Jackets fighting back. It's a nice job by Bianca Bergolino here. She's out of system. We've seen in the past of this match her kind of take a little off and just roll shot it. There she actually takes a nice rip at it and tools a unsteady block. <laughs> Anna DeBeer on the receiving end of a perfect pass from Tori Dilfer, and this is just a thing of beauty. And I love the reaction. It's almost like she's fed up. Stop playing with our food, fed up. <laughs> Give me the kill, and let's go to work and close this thing out. That was the look she just gave after that kill. That is my favorite Katieism. Now Bartlett got caught in trying to help out Jones there, and no one was behind it, so Georgia Tech gets the point back to bring the Yellow Jackets within two, even at a set apiece with a spot in the national semifinal round on the line. Pittsburgh getting the first ticket to Columbus with a four-set win over Purdue. There will be two ACC teams in Columbus. Will the second team be Georgia Tech or Louisville? Bear drops the hammer again. I mean, I don't even know if you make the right read and get your body directly in front of this at the pace it's coming at. I don't know if you're able to body that and keep it inside the court of play. She hits with so much force. I'll just back up a step. Do you want to be in the No, line of I don't. Right. Yeah, I didn't think so. People knew that about me. I just opened up my shoulder. McKissick has it deflected out of play, so it's a point for Georgia Tech. And I love the passion and the fire for Maddie McKissick. She's running the show for her team over there, trying to will them to win, like, much like we've seen Mari Brombila do. There she takes matters into her own hands, gets the point for her team, down by two. McKissick was the ACC Center of the Year back in 2019. Battled injuries. Last season, that's Stevenson with the kill for Louisville. It's an excellent run by Louisville. Tori Dilfer gets it right on top of her head. She gets the one-on-one -on -one here, and it's a little bit tight, but that's perfect for Anna Stevenson when she's in a one-on-one -on -one situation. She can cut back if she wants. She can take it down line, and she gets up at such a height that that trajectory is so hard to defend against. Eight kills, seven blocks for Stevenson. CC Rush serves. There's Brambilla swinging from the back row. Another kill for the senior. That's 21. Great job by Brambilla making it work out of the back court. Now she moves into the front row. You've got Brambilla on the right, Morissette in the middle, Julia Bergman on the left. In this region, this is her sixth set. She is averaging 6.5. It's disgusting. Per set. That's disgusting. You hope for maybe above three from a pin hitter. Louisville bounces back with a point. Claire Chasse, a beacon of consistency right now on the outside pin. She does such a nice job recognizing the block in front of her, knowing exactly where to go, putting the pace that she needs. Pimentel can't keep it inside. Dilfer serves. McKissick looks for Brambilla. Dilfer for Jones. Brambilla again, that one goes wide. 
Timeout, Georgia Tech. Louisville two points away from going up two sets to one. Great response by Louisville there to force Michelle Collier to call the timeout. Georgia Tech was pressing, cut it to two, much like we saw in set two. And Georgia Tech was able to oust them there. Michelle Collier wants to talk about it, regroup. Hey, take a breath. Let's go out, side out efficiently. Pittsburgh one and four over Purdue to earn a spot in Columbus. Like a tour member, Mene with 21 kills. Pittsburgh with three losses on the season. Louisville twice and Georgia Tech. Those are the three losses. They are on to the Final Four for the first time in program history. And it's got to feel so good for Dan Fisher and that group. Kayla Lund obviously leading the charge. If you remember a season ago, which happened in the spring because of COVID-19 in the NCAA tournament, they actually faced Washington after Washington knocked Louisville out. It was in the regional final. They were up two games to none, and Washington had this absolute knack to come back and win in five sets. They played more five setters than any team in the country, and they lost an absolute heartbreaker when they were on the cusp of making a national semifinal. So Pittsburgh's got to feel really good about coming back a season later and righting the wrong. So they're on to the national semifinals for the first time in program history. The winner of this match will reach the national semifinals for the first time in program history. Guaranteed to have two ACC teams in Columbus. Wisconsin, Minnesota, Nebraska, Texas still to come on what is a phenomenal day of volleyball. Out of the Pittsburgh timeout, served by Dilfer. Georgia Tech looks for Brambila. She goes with the off speed to get a much needed point for the Yellow Jackets. Smart volleyball by Mari there. She's moved the ball around so well tonight. 22 kills and 326. Goes to power when she needs it, but she's willing to lighten the load sometimes and just place a tip as 20, well. 22 kills as we play here in the third set. McKissick's got a chance to set Bertolino, who grabs the line. Point Georgia Tech. Here come the Yellow Jackets down by two again. Timeout Louisville. Serving to be a great timeout by Michelle Collier. Settled her team out down. They come out, knock off two points here. Danny Busboom Kelly now forced to call a timeout to have a conversation with her team. So Louisville, he's used their two timeouts here in this third set. While they talk, I can remind you that tomorrow, men's basketball, big showdown in Waco. Sixth ranked Villanova, second ranked Baylor. Three Eastern, two Central on ABC and also on the ESPN app. One app, one tap. So you got the women's hoop doubleheader coming up tomorrow. You got men's basketball tomorrow. We've got our four volleyball showdowns here today. Just a great weekend of college sports as we head into finals. And would a lot of people like to take a break a little bit, but we're just getting ramped up here tonight. We're not even at the midpoint of our volleyball coverage here tonight. Still to come. Minnesota and Wisconsin, 8 o'clock Eastern time from Madison. The winner of this regional will play the winner of that regional as Wisconsin tries to reach the national semifinals for a third straight season. And Minnesota tries to end a five-match losing streak to Wisconsin. Minnesota knocked out Baylor, who was the higher seed, so they got the upset. Texas had an absolute thriller of a match against Washington. They were down two sets to none. Came back in one set three, four, and then five to make it to this point. We've seen some incredible volleyball matches throughout this NCAA tournament, and I can guarantee you we're going to see more. <laughs> Who knows what we're going to see the rest of the night here at Freedom Hall, Louisville. Can Georgia Tech get the comeback here in set number three? Dilfer Chausse. Set point, Cardinals. <laughs> Claire Chausse has had a big time performance here tonight. A team high 12 kills hitting 423. And now sophomore Aiden Bartlett serving for set three. 
Morris set, missed the mark. Set three goes to the Cardinals. Great response by Louisville. They lose set two after having control. They talk about it, come back, and play textbook volleyball. Took Georgia Tech's best shot there. It's going to make for a great set four. 25-21, Louisville goes up two to one. Tori Dilfer, this crowd's been electric during that timeout, going crazy here. It's such a big crowd. And you know who's provided a spark here for the cards? Claire Chausse. 12 kills, just one error on 26 attempts. She's hitting 423. She's been a bright spot. And Danny Busboom Kelly said when they went to her this season as the rightful L2, she's got big play potential. She can rise to the occasion when the lights are bright. And so far in a regional final, she's doing it. Her season high, 18 kills, and that came in the five-setter against the defending national champions, Kentucky. That was a bright lights moment for Louisville, and she delivered. Jones. That one floats wide. Point Georgia Tech to start set number four. Again, it comes back to plain, clean volleyball here for Georgia Tech if they're going to force this to five. Both sides, really. Georgia Tech had 10 unforced errors in set three. And if you remember, they were two points away from taking the lead late. So if they can just clean up some of those attack errors up in the front row, they're in good hands. It's been the tale of two different Georgia Techs, a team that makes a lot of errors like we saw in sets one and sets three, a team that plays clean volleyball like we saw in set two that was able to win that set. Bertolino having a good match. Eight kills now and seven digs for the freshman from Argentina. Beer takes it at Brambilla for the kill and the point. It's a great set in terms of location because Anna De Beer is able to do whatever she wants, cross court or turn it line. Here she turns it line. She's got about two feet to work with. McKissick needs to move out just a tad. Anna De Beer able to light up Brambilla. 11 kills now for De Beer and 13 digs, so a double double for the sophomore. Moss answers back with authority for Georgia Tech. Excellent run here. Great pass by Bergman. McKissick runs with tempo on the slide. And Aaron Moss absolutely loves the result. with another kill for Louisville. That's their 40th of the match. She's played college volleyball for a long time, which means she recognizes what's in front of her. She had a double block, sees it, goes cross body, cuts it back to zone one for the kill. Picked up the 1,000th kill of her long career in this NCAA tournament in the win against Ball State. Bergman has been very, very quiet. If they can get her going, that could be the difference for Georgia Tech. She's got her fourth kill tonight. Cross court is her bread and butter. Can you do this consistently here in set four to force a set five? You're getting production from Brombula. You need more production from Julia Bergman, the reigning ACC player of the year. Four kills on the night is not going to get it done. Especially when you combine that with seven errors. And there's an ace, Kaiser, who is never afraid to show some emotion, especially back here in her hometown, comes up with the ace for Georgia Tech. That's her 19th ace of the season. They say it got blocked out, and I think the up official is going to overrule the call, saying it was deflected. The Georgia Tech bench was up immediately, saying touch, touch. So yep. the up official, the lead official, the R1, Patty Rolfe, says it's Georgia Tech point. Looks like it actually goes off of somebody's leg here, Anna De Beers' leg, after making the attack. De Beers' leg or her left arm that was trailing back a little bit? Probably the leg, because you have better eyesight than me. Here's De Beer again. Another block for Georgia Tech, but this time the point goes to Louisville. Five. 
So De Beer will head back to the service line. With Georgia Tech out to an early lead here in set four. Here's Bergman. Not a lot on that one. A chance for De Beer to get it. They try Bergman again. Chausse. Bergman has it blocked by Stevenson. Great job by Anna Stevenson recognizing sets falling inside, out of system. I got to stay put. Julia Bergman needs to recognize, hey, I got a big block in front of me. Not the time to haul off and make a big swing. Just put it in play. Trust that your defense can get you another set. Eighth block of the night for Anna Stevenson. Dilfer for Stevenson for the kill. Third card in the double figures and kills now with 10. Patty McKissick waving her hands toward teammates. It's all right, calm down, we're good. Settle down, let's side out quickly. Brambila, that back row attack, Louisville defended it well in set number one. They defended well here. Dilfer goes to Stevenson again. It's a nice run by Louisville. Julia Bergman's actually in great position, just gets up a tad late, so she's not fully pressed over. That's why the ball's able to go between her and the net. 4-0 run, good service run here for De Beer. He's done everything well here tonight, including Dig. Another block, and Stevenson one more time for Louisville. Unbelievable. She knows that Julia Bergman's best shot is cross court, and she dives into it time and time again. So Michelle Collier has brought out the challenge card. They are going to go to the monitor here to see if there was a net violation on Louisville during that exchange. At the moment, it's a 5 nothing run. The ball hit the arms and then hit the net, and I, thought, I think Stevenson held back. I didn't see contact. Did you, Katie? No, I can understand why you'd go to the challenge because you see that net bounce, but you are exactly right. Your, your eyes are so good. You said you had bad eyesight. Hits Anna Stevenson, ball clips the net. I, I didn't say I the block bad eyesight. I just said your eyesight is better than mine. You well, know, when you're uh, younger eyes for sure. So now, why do you have to do that on our last match of the season? We are getting along it's so been a well. Long season. <laughs> So the challenge is unsuccessful. Again, in the experimental rule, Georgia Tech would be out of challenges right now, but instead they have one remaining, and if we go to a fifth set, they'll have an added challenge. Well, I was about to ask, in what way will Anna Stevenson contribute on this point because she's had a hand or two hands in on every point, it seems, for Louisville here in this set? I mean, how many times do I have to break down this play? I don't know what else to say. Is that like her seventh block in this set alone? You ready? Dan Ferran's got the numbers. She's been in on their last five points, maybe six here. Three kills and three blocks. Six of their eight points this set. And Bergman is going to get the kill. That one ricocheted off of the beer. Morissette. Or is it Morissette? Thank you. Morissette comes in with the block. Bergman gets a piece of it as well. They're like, Anna Stevenson can't be the only person in this gym that's going <laughs> to block the ball. OK? We're going to get involved.
Stevenson into double figures now with 10 blocks. Closing in on a career high in kills. You know her career high in kills came in the 2019 NCAA tournament when she had 14 in that upset of Texas and Austin. Talk about performing when the lights are bright. That's Stevenson, Bertolino. Good job to keep it alive for Georgia Tech. Chasse, another one. 13 kills to lead Louisville. Blair Chasse just having so much success deep cross court. Her 13th kill of the match. Great two digs. <laughs> so Stevenson with the blocks, Stevenson with the kills, Stevenson with the digs. And now let's see if she'll add an ace to her collection. Not this time. That's in. Good swing from Georgia Tech. They needed it after Louisville had gone on a run to go up by two. Much needed kill there by Morissette. Great run by Maddie McKissick, running that three quick gap a couple feet in front of her. Morissette goes cross body, catches Louisville's defense off guard. Tillman got it to drop in. Great run, quick set behind Tori Dilfer. Maya Tillman's got two blocks, just swings high, catches the fingertips. Up off the block for the point for Louisville to put the cards back on top by three. Tori Dilfer. Scott digs it. Smart play by Braun Bila. Jones. Dilfer gets there. Jones just has to bump it over. McKissick will set it back again for oh. Brambilo, who hammers it home off of Dilfer, took the shot hard. That's a tough one. I think he just knocked the wind out of her a little bit. Hit her right there in the throat. Kelsey Pennebaker is the athletic trainer for Louisville, and she came right out onto the floor. Oh, yeah, right up on the chest, and then it came up on the chin. Tori's okay. I think Trent can exhale. I don't know if we've seen him yet, though. There's Dad. Is he breathing? <laughs> I don't know if he's breathing. You he's said, concerned, You said okay? he usually paces around every I'm surprised match. He's yeah, he's seated. He's, he's on the edge of his seat, though, obviously. That one's out of play off of Georgia Tech. And the point for Louisville. I'm going to call for a towel here to mop up the floor. Georgia Tech down by three. Louisville with the serve with Bartlett. For Moss, Dilfer tried to get there, could not. Off the hands and out of play. Georgia Tech within two. They took set two, 25-21. They're down two sets to one. 
Louisville's defense has done a really nice job on the outside pins of Georgia Tech. Where they haven't had as much success is defending the middle. If you're Maddie McKissick, you've got to continue to ride the middles here. Or he just set it to DeBeer on the outside and let her do her thing. If you're Louisville, that's been their game plan tonight. Both pins, Chasse, DeBeer, have been excellent on that outside pin. Chasse and DeBeer both with 13 kills. We'll go to Brambilla. Oh, that's Scott. Got a hand in there. Bertolino blocked back by Ico Jones, but out. One-on-one -on -one there, Bertolino still finds Ico Jones' hands, but this time able to tool the block outside the court of play. Here comes Isabella D'Amico. She'll come in as McKissick will head to the bench for that defensive substitution for Georgia Tech. D'Amico brings some more size to the front line. Great touch. Rambula has only one speed. You talked about this before, Katie, and that is all out. Shelly Collier says we never have to push her to go hard, and maybe they need to pull off the gas a little bit, but she has had so many swings, 56 swings in this match so far. 23 kills, it's the most she's ever had against a Louisville team that she's faced. <laughs> 57 kills. I was going to ask you, is she tired? Is, is there a time where it comes like, all right, you're just digging into whatever reserves you have just to try to say, because she's laid it all out here in these two matches. She could be tired tomorrow. Tired tomorrow if she wills her team to win and make a national semifinal. She's not worried about that right now. She's doing everything in her power to keep Georgia Tech in this match. She needs a little bit of help from some of her counterparts. Kaiser with the serve. DeBear hammers another one down. Team high 14 kills for Anna DeBeer, and that will get us to a media timeout. It comes with Louisville on top, 15 to 12. The pins have been outstanding. Chasse and the beer on target, Louisville. We know one team that's going to be in Columbus for the national semifinals on Thursday. That is the Pittsburgh Panthers. They knocked off Purdue 3-1 to earn their first ever appearance in the national semifinal round. They'll take on the winner of the Nebraska-Texas showdown coming up on 10 Eastern time on ESPNU. Minnesota and Wisconsin are about to get started. If you're looking for that match, it's going to be on the ESPN app. And then the moment we're done here in Louisville, we'll send you to Madison for that Big Ten showdown as Louisville and Georgia Tech play here in set number four with Louisville on top 15 to 12 and up two sets to one. Mariana Brambilla with 24 kills. That matches the season high. She had 24 against Pittsburgh this season. Stevenson with the kill. Off of Bertolino, another point for Anna Stevenson. Double-double and kills and blocks for her tonight. 12 kills, 10 blocks. Timeout called by Pittsburgh. And when you look at the stats right now, Eric, Anna DeBeer's got 14 kills. Anna Stevenson now has 12. Claire Chasse, 13. Balance is what you see across that front line. It's not that Georgia Tech doesn't have a similar kind of balance. Bianca Bertolino, nine kills. Mariana Brambilla, 24 kills. So she's doing everything in her power right now. A couple more people right now need to step up when they come out of this timeout. Side out efficiently, immediately actually, and then go on a run. So Georgia Tech uses their first of two timeouts here in this four set, now down by four to the number one team in the country. Louisville women's basketball team is ranked seventh in the country. They'll be hosting Kentucky at the KFC Yum Center tomorrow. You can see that matchup, that rivalry game, Sunday, 1 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN. That's game one of a doubleheader on the 20th annual Women's Jimmy V Classic. It'll be number one, South Carolina, hosting number eight, Maryland.
Of course, there'll be plenty of heavy hearts. We talked about at the very top of our telecast. It's just been so heartbreaking to watch what has happened here in the Commonwealth and the states bordering the Commonwealth, the tornadoes that moved through the area. Governor of Kentucky, Andy Bashir, fearing 70 to 100 people losing their lives in these tornadoes. A tornado, one of them may have been on a 227 mile path. So that's been the news that's dominating here. They had a moment of silence. Obviously, our thoughts, our hearts go to all those who have been impacted here in the Commonwealth and all around after all the storms last night and early this morning. Out of the Georgia Tech timeout, Louisville with the serve, and they look for Bergman, it's DeBeer. Great defense by DeBeer to keep Louisville in the point. How about take two? And the point goes to Louisville. And fans are on their feet, and rightfully so. When you think of Anna DeBeer, the sophomore outside for this team, you think of the bright and shiny kills, but it's defensive plays like that in a back-to-back -back sequence that make her a special all-around player. Anna Stevenson has been responsible for seven of the 17 points for the cards are set, so Anna DeBeer contributing. Well, I think Louisville's done an excellent job defensively against Brambilla. They've kept Brambilla in check here since she went off in set two, and that's kind of turned things around here for the cards, and a timeout is being called by Georgia Tech as Louisville stretched it to a six-point lead. This is what a national championship caliber team looks like. Great defense, able to take a opposing team's best shot and keep it alive. Then the ability to run your offense as efficiently as possible with so many options in the front row. Tori Dilfer has a plethora of hitters and then they're able to execute time and time again when they take the swing. Louisville. They are complete. Louisville, as Katie mentioned before, motivated, inspired by how last season ended against Washington in the regional semifinal round in Omaha. The Cardinals have won 42 of their last 43 matches. They lost a set tonight. That means they have lost 12 sets this season, and they are now seven points away from a spot in the Final Four in Columbus. I believe you and I were on the call a season ago when they played Washington we in the regional semifinal. Remember that one went five sets. And Louisville, much like we've seen in this set, was blocking the crap out of the ball left and right in set five. They actually had a pretty big lead. It looked like it was in the bag. They were going to a regional final, an Elite Eight, if you will. And then it slowly slipped out of their hands because Washington went on an incredible serving run, and Washington ended up coming back in that set to win it in five to advance, and it was it was gut-wrenching watching. Just as somebody who played the game, when you're so close to something and you're not able to capitalize, and that's been the fuel to the fire. You know, so many coaches will say, well, we learned so much from that loss. Sometimes you have to lose to become a better team. Well, they lost last season, and that was enough to carry them through the entirety of this one. Out of the timeout, Georgia Tech, desperate for a point and something to turn it around, gets the point from Breland Morissette. That snaps a 4 nothing Louisville run. Great run to the middle there, and you can feel the urgency from Georgia Tech. They know their season is on the ropes right now. They've got to go. Chasse didn't look like she had a lot to work with, but she is locked in right now. She's going against a triple block. A triple block and still manage, manages to find the crack in the seam. Julia Bergman goes all the way over to help out. Doesn't matter. Claire Chasse still able to find her shot. Chasse looked like she dropped it in perfectly. We see one line judge says out, one line judge said in. Trent Dilfer says in. Danny Busboom Kelly says, let's use my first challenge of the night.
looks out. So the sideline judge calls it in because, of course, it is inside the sideline. Right. The question is, is it too far deep? That's close. I think we're going to have to take a couple of looks at this one, see if we can blow it up a little bit. The ruling is that the ball is out. And it's a point for Georgia Tech. First of three challenges used by Danny Busboom Kelly. Georgia Tech has an idea, a pretty good idea, of what the right call is because it was directly in front of Michelle Collier. But that angle, does it flip? Is it on the white line from that angle? Because we're looking at it with this camera fixed on the Louisville side of the net. But when we first looked at it from an end zone angle, this angle right here, that looks out. When you look at it from that angle, Katie, that's not enough to say, I have definitive proof that that ball is in and we are going to reverse this call. And that's the crux of this, right? The down official is looking at the exact footage we are looking at showing the viewers at home. Is it enough to overturn it? That's up to him. Wade Dubois taking a long look at it. He points to his left, the call stands. His right, it's overturned. The call stands. Yeah, it's one of those two, if it was called in and Georgia Tech challenged it, there's not enough to flip it the other way. Exactly. Right? So, so, big call there for this match right now with Louisville on top 19-14. Dilfer got there. Dropped in by Rambila, 25 kills, a new season high, and it matches her career high. And Bergman, keep the run going. Great pass. Who else? Rambilla gets another kill, a new career high. 26 kills and counting for the senior. I don't know if Georgia Tech has enough in the tank to force a fifth set and to win this match. But if not, Mariana Brambilla can go home knowing she did absolutely everything in her power tonight to win this match for her team. She has been incredible. Absolutely incredible. So much respect for what she's done from start to finish tonight. You talked about the balance on the other side. There has been plenty of balance for Louisville. You have to look at the effort for Anna DeBeer tonight with the 14 kills and the 20 digs to go along with the three blocks. Let's take a look at her night. She's our viewer performer of the night. She swings with so much power. Obviously, cross court is her bread and butter, but she can turn that ball down the line, and you better be ready for it, because if not, it's going to hurt. And then you mentioned the 20 digs in the backcourt. Are you kidding? You're expected to get kills. But this Louisville team expects her to have defensive performances like that time and time again. She is the epitome of an all-around player. So De Beer with... 14 and 20 kills and digs. Stevenson with 12 and 10 kills and blocks. Chausse leading the way for Louisville with 16 kills. Brambula with 26 of the 53 kills for Georgia Tech. Her tonight. arm's gonna fall off. Surprised they didn't ice her down during that timeout. They might have. They gave her a gummy for extra sugar. I saw her eat that. Can Georgia Tech put together another run like they did at the end of set number two? That's what they have to have right now. 
Chasse with their 17th kill of the night. Chasse gets the kill, but credit to Tori Dilfer. She's on the run here, backpedaling. She's still able to get her body around it and push it with tempo to keep Chasse on the right attack line. Great job by Tori Dilfer working to get her feet around it to keep her hitter in system. Up on Bergman, and that's an ace. Tori Dilfer. Dilfer gets the ace, fourth of the night for the cards. And with that ace, you can start to feel it in the room. Four points away from a national semifinal. Kissing with the dive to save it. Scott calls for it. Dilfer. Robila off hands for another kill. 27 kills. Vamos is what she said. Let's go. Unreal. Great job by Georgia Tech. Hanging tough. Just keeping the ball alive, waiting for their moment to work it through. What a performance by the senior. Chasse has had a memorable performance of her own. Senior battling senior. Kill number 18. That matches her season high that she had against Kentucky in that five set win. She's done it in four here tonight. Her career high, 21 in the NCAA tournament against San Diego last season. It always feels like when they need a big time performance in the NCAA tournament, Claire Chasse answers the call. Great dig. Scott had the dig. Oh, oh and on the foul, through a lot of contact with the men. I don't think there's gonna be a person wearing red who would dispute that one point for Georgia Tech. She just wanted it so badly. <laughs> it didn't matter what was standing in her way. So back to the service line. Goes Brambila. See if they set up another attack for her. Instead, Bertolino. Dilfer. Almost dropped it in. Bodies flying around on this point. Great defensive performance. Another great job. Bartlett kept it alive, so Scott can bump it over. And that one misses the mark. Point Louisville. Two points from Columbus. Iko Jones giving Aiden Bartlett a big old hug, and she deserves it. <laughs> Elena Scott. Back row swing, it's long, match point, Louisville, and the roof is ready to blow off historic Freedom Hall. Sounds like it did when I was a kid coming to watch Jenny Crum's men's basketball team. That's how loud this place is, supporting this volleyball team. Scott serving for the match. Robbie <laughs> Bartlett's got it. Scott calls for it. Off hands and out of Georgia Tech. Hang in there. Match point number two for Louisville. Bertolino back to serve. Jones. Oh, a match point number three. Stevenson does it. Louisville does it. 
This historic season will continue in Columbus. Unfortunately, not enough for the Yellow Jackets. Nothing to hang their heads over. But this Louisville team is complete. They have everything you need to win a national title. In front of 5,917 fans here at Freedom Hall, the Cardinals are smiling again after a match. 32 matches played, 32 wins for Louisville, and what a performance by Mariana Brambilla, willing her Georgia Tech team to this point. 27 kills, but it's Louisville with the win. They take it in four. For Katie George and our entire crew here at Louisville, I'm Eric Fried. It's been a pleasure to bring it to you. Louisville celebrating again. We go to the studio, Sam Gore, Jennifer Hoffman. <laughs>